Dr. Sage here. In this video, we're going to begin discussing antimicrobial treatment. In particular, we're going to discuss the principles of antimicrobial therapy. By the end of this video, you should be able to state the main goal of antimicrobial treatment, identify sources of the most commonly used antimicrobial drugs, summarize two methods for testing antimicrobial susceptibility, define therapeutic index, and identify whether a high or low index is preferable in a drug. The goal of antimicrobial therapy is to administer a drug to an infected person that destroys the infected agent without harming the host cells. However, no drug is perfect. The characteristics of the ideal antimicrobial drug include being toxic to the microbe, but non-toxic to the host, microbicidal rather than microbostatic, relatively soluble, and functions even with highly diluted in body fluids, remains potent long enough to act and is not broken down or excreted prematurely, does not lead to the development of antimicrobial resistance, complements or assists the activities of the host defenses, remains active in tissues and body fluids, readily delivered to the site of infection, reasonably priced, and does not disrupt the host's health by causing allergies or predisposing the host to other infections. Some terminology, Prophylactics is the use of drug to prevent imminent infection of a person at risk. Antimicrobial chemotherapy is the use of drugs to control infection. Antimicrobials is an all-inclusive term for any antimicrobial drug, regardless of what type of microorganism it targets. Antibiotics are substances produced by the natural metabolic processes of some microorganisms or created by scientists that can inhibit or destroy microorganisms. Generally, the term is used for drugs targeting bacteria and not other types of microbes. Semi-synthetic drugs are drugs that are chemically modified in the laboratory after being isolated from natural sources. Synthetic drugs are drugs produced entirely by chemical reactions within a laboratory setting. Narrow spectrum or limited spectrum, these are antimicrobials effective against a limited array of microbial types. For example, a drug effective mainly on gram-positive bacteria broad spectrum or extended spectrum, antimicrobials effective against a wide variety of microbial types, for example, a drug effective against both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Antibiotics are common metabolic products of bacteria and fungi. Inhibiting the growth of other microorganisms in the same habitat reduces competition for nutrients and space. Selective advantage has allowed the genes for antibiotic production to be preserved in evolution. New drugs are created by chemically altering the structure of naturally occurring antibiotics to create semi-synthetic drugs. Synthetic drugs, some natural compounds cannot be obtained without the destruction of a habitat or a gizmo population. These are drugs created in the laboratory to mimic the action of these natural compounds. Three factors must be known before starting antimicrobial therapy. The identity of the microorganism causing the infection, the degree of the microorganism's susceptibility or sensitivity to various drugs, and the overall medical condition of the patient. Identification of the infectious agent from body specimens should be attempted as soon as possible. Before any antimicrobial drug is given, this can happen by direct examination of body fluids, sputum, or stool. In order to test for drug susceptibility, one method is the Kirby-Bauer technique. The surface of a plate, a special medium, is spread with test bacteria. Small discs containing pre-measured amounts of antibiotics are dispersed onto the bacterial lawn. A zone of inhibition formed during incubation is measured and compared with a standard for each drug. Antibiogram is a profile of antimicrobial sensitivity. So, for example, let's say you spread a particular bacteria on this plate, and then you place several different antimicrobial discs on the plate. Or, as you can see in this actual image here, the antimicrobial discs. Then, you see how far you have a zone where the bacteria cannot grow. So for example, with this antibiotic, the bacteria are unable to grow in a wide region around the disc. Whereas with this antibiotic, it's a much narrower region. An alternative to the kirby bauer procedure is the E-test. For example, in this E-test, vancomycin is shown to have a MIC of 1.5 micrograms per milliliter against Staphylococcus aureus. So essentially, you have different concentrations of a particular antibiotic, higher concentrations being here, lowest concentration being down here, and you can see how strong the concentration needs to be 
to actually prevent bacterial growth. Another way of testing drug susceptibility is tube dilution tests. So the minimum inhibitory concentration, or MIC, is the smallest concentration, or highest dilution, of a drug that visibly inhibits growth. This is useful in determining the smallest effective dose of a drug and provides a comparative index against other antimicrobials. In clinical laboratories, these tests are performed by automated machinery. Here's a couple of examples of the dilution test. So you grow bacteria in a liquid medium with different concentrations of antibiotics and see at which concentration you are required to have in order to prevent bacterial growth. Or this can be done on a plate with several different antibiotics at the same time and see what the minimum concentration is for different antibiotics for that particular bacteria. So for example, this particular bacteria is more susceptible to penicillin. You require a lower dose of penicillin to inhibit growth versus erythromycin, you require a much higher dose of erythromycin to prevent growth. The results of antimicrobial sensitivity tests guide the physician's choice of a suitable drug. If treatment fails, the failure is due to the inability of the drug to diffuse into that body compartment, for example, the brain, joints, or skin, resistant microbes in the infection that didn't make it into the sample collected for testing, or an infection caused by more than one pathogen, some of which are resistant to the drug. Therapeutic index, or TI, is the ratio of the dose of the drug that is toxic to humans to its minimum of effective or therapeutic dose. The closer these two figures are to each other, in other words, the smaller the ratio, the greater the potential for toxic drug interactions. A TI of 1.1 is a much riskier choice compared to a TI of 10. When drugs have similar MICs, the drug with the highest TI has the widest margin of safety. The patient must be considered. Pre-existing medical conditions that will influence the activity of the drug or response of the patient, history of allergy to a certain class of drugs, underlying liver or kidney disease, also infants, elderly, and pregnant women require special precautions. This has been an overview of the principles of antimicrobial therapy. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.